Hey guys, I'm back at work on the Philco signal generator. If you recall, in the last installment, I figured out the B plus issue, got the power supply squared away, and rebuilt a couple of the Bakelite blocks for line conditioning, but still not working. So what I wanted to tackle next was the paper caps that are down by the band switch very hard to get at so what I'm going to try doing is removing the band switch from the front so I pulled the knob off there's no set screw or anything to just pull on and off and it's a 9 16 inch nut holding the switch in place so I'm going to take that off now it's wired in so heavily I don't expect it to just come out but I'm hoping it'll Give me some room, maybe. If there's enough lead length. Well, there's enough slack for it to be pulled away from the front, but lead length's pretty darn short, so that didn't actually do me much good. So I'm looking in here and to see how this sub chassis held on. It's held on by screws. See, there's one here and there's one on the other side and that and then this whole sub chassis would loosen up but how the heck do you get at those screws well they're behind this decorative cover so that would have to come off which means well pulling the remaining knobs off those are easy enough but this is held on by a set screw and if I take that off then screws up the calibration assuming this is calibrated <laughs> So that kind of sucks. And if I get all those off, then it's held on by these two screws. I won't have to remove any of the controls themselves. Uh, just get the knobs off. Hmm. So that's one approach. The other would be to just somehow get in there. But I just don't see that happening. So as much of a headache as it is, what I'm going to do is put this bag on and take the front off and then I can just really get in there and get at everything I'll just have to recalibrate it when I get this thing working oh well so it's just I think no there's two set screws flat bladed small flat bladed screwdriver will take care of that first let's do the easy thing which is to just pull these knobs off let's see all right well I've got this kit which I've used many times before it's got a nice big handle and many bits this guy should do my only question is with the fat handle will I be able to get in there it's also got a ratchet mechanism nice little kit Does fit, so let's see. Yeah, I got it. Okay, how about the other one? So that is just a standard Philco radio knob, except there's no molded pointer on it like they usually have. It's also odd in that I'm pretty sure it's Bakelite, but it almost looks like it's painted metal and the paint is flaking off. Huh. There's no way that's metal though. Hmm. I guess I'll try polishing it up. Same with these. They have a similar deal going on. Got some Novus around here. Minor detail, but I am curious. So as soon as I get this front off, I want to try polishing that up and see what's what. All right, so now to get this off. So, and while I got everything out, I can clean it all up. That is a cool pointer. Felt thing, don't want to lose that.
also give me a chance to flush out and repack the bearings. Although this is working pretty well, I can see the grease is kind of gunked up. Alright, that leaves two screws. Interesting construction technique. Hindsight of a new if I was going to be doing this, I would have done this immediately because if you take this off, you eliminate any chance of damaging it. Nut and lock washer on the other side. So now this should just lift off. Ta da! Pretty sure this is solid brass sheet that they painted with black lacquer. We'll use. Uh, I'll try cleaning it with just some uh, mild uh, soapy, warm soapy water. So I think it's clear coated, and I don't want to rub through that. It's in really nice condition. All right, so that goes away for safekeeping. Now, this is what I wanted to get at, so we want to take out these two, so this doesn't actually go to anything. Oh no, no I'm wrong, we got to take out these three. All quarter inch. Chassis appears to be galvanized steel. Don't think it's cadmium plated, but it might be. It's just there's a little corrosion on it that makes me inclined to think that it's uh, not cadmium. Oh, I guess I do need to take this off as well. Duh. Switch you gotta come out too. Alright. Should probably just take the whole friggin' thing off. Took a couple more nuts and the rest of these quarter inch sheet metal screws and the whole thing will just come apart. I took plenty of reference photos, so I should be able to get this back together without any difficulties. And there we go. So now, <laughs> no excuses for not being able to get at anything. I think I'll disconnect this attenuator. I noticed uh, earlier that the connections on this are pretty frayed, that wire there, and some of the connections to these jacks. That aside, 
this filter cap. There's only one connection going, or not filter cap, tuning cap, I should say. So, it's a little terminal strip on the tuning cap, and uh, one's going to the cap lead on that tube, one to the attenuator, and there's one connection going to that. So, if I disconnect that one wire, take all that aside, soldering iron, heat it up. This now, still a little tricky to get at because the leads are short. But there we go, that's what we want to get at. All right, sometimes you just got to go for it. So, attenuator. So, here's frayed wire I'd noticed earlier. There's only a couple strands left on that going to the main output jack. So Take care of that subassembly on its own. Clean up the variable capacitor on its own. And then I'll work on these two. And I noticed there were some standoffs, so I'll have to figure out where those go. They must go with these three longer screws that had washers on them. So it's to be a little bit of work to figure out. Now, as far as separating these two chassis, maybe. Looks like we got. Which, that, I don't know, I'll, I'll work with it as best I can. Or, uh, can I separate this? I don't know. I'm trying to decide if it's worth the hassle to separate any more of this. It would be cool if I could detach this, because then I can get really down in here. I'll check all these resistors, rebuild that block. I guess I'll try to. So that will again make life easier. I don't think this wiring is all that critical and I'm replacing this anyways and that's one of the things holding this together. In fact I'm just going to cut it right now because I want to test that capacitor for leakage. It's 0 0.05 ready for 200 volts. One of the reasons I thought this thing might work all right as is, is that um, it only runs on about 100 volts. But clearly something's not working right in it. So it is leaky at 200 volts, but not really at 100. Let's check the capacitance. Well, it must be pretty leaky because I can't get a solid eye opening. There's a bit of a deflection around 0.07, but the eye never really opens. So although it isn't showing really any leakage at 100 volts, um, this capacitor is not up to snuff, that's for sure. I don't know how much voltage it applies when it checks the capacitance. I don't think it's that much. But since I can't get a good... When the capacitor is good, you get a very distinct open eye wedge, kind of like it looks right now. And I'm not getting that. Let's check the other one. Same exact type capacitor, also a .05. I clipped out one lead, left the other one in circuit, so I have better idea of where the replacement needs to go. First let's check for leakage. Just like the other one, a little bit leaky at 200 but not at 100. And same deal. Just kind of a weak response. It around well, this one's even higher or more off is more around 0.08 so I'll get you a new cap to show what it should test like that is a brand new 0.047 630 volt plastic film capacitor let's check this on the capacitance bridge and here you can see is a very distinct eye opening and 
right on 0.05. The others were more like over here. So both the value was off and they were very leaky. The camera's picking that up. Kill the lights even more. I'm looking through the viewfinder and I can't I can't see the uh, pie wedge that's just see a big glowing circle. But uh that is full eye open right there. Anyways, kind of figured the older something is, the less likely the caps are to be good. Get to the 30s, talking paper caps like this. I don't think I've ever tested one that wasn't leaky. When in doubt, uh, I'd suggest you just replace them. No, I'm really glad I took this all apart because lurking down between the switch decks was yet another 0.05 microfarad cap, so that's going to go. I've already replaced one over here and checked all the resistors and they are within 20%, so good news, I don't have to mess with any of those. Uh, I've got that paper cap to replace and one more that was over in this area and then the bake light block. I want to do a little work on this variable capacitor. There's ball bearings inside there to make that planetary drive work. I'm going to take that apart, flush it out. Now you can see them back here much better. I'll flush it out and I'm put new grease in there. Here's a look inside that planetary drive assembly. I do not recommend you do this unless you've got some experience with doing it or it's really seized up because it's easy to mess it up. So there are three larger ball bearings that go into holes in the shaft and then it's, there's smaller ball bearings behind. There's a spring down inside. The shaft goes in like this. There's some spring tension there. And those ball bearings go into those holes, and then this cowl goes over the whole thing and keeps it in place. I've seen a lot worse, but this could use a good cleaning, and uh, I'll pack some fresh grease in after I'm done. Ah, that's better. Got some nice clean balls and shaft and cowl and flushed out those bearings as best I could. I don't want to take the whole thing apart. I used some lacquer thinner and some contact cleaner. Seemed to do a pretty good job. And now I'm going to use this Luber plate grease to repack it. Here it is all cleaned up and re-greased and back together. Nice smooth action. The only thing you want to be careful of when you do this, aside from losing the bearings and such, is that it's actually a metal finger up towards the front and one on the back that rub against this. That's how it grounds the movable capacitor plates. And see I've got some grease in there. You really want to keep that pretty clean so it makes good electrical contact. So I'm going to go over that and clean it a bit. It's a little tricky though because if you spray something like deoxid in there you're going to flush the grease out of the bearings behind it. One uh, plus in using thicker grease. This kind of grease I used, it's good stuff but it does have a bit of oil kind of mixed in. Uh, wasn't so bad when I first got it but it's been sitting around for a while and uh, it kind of separated a bit, so I gotta get in there and clean that a little. It's typically a grease and oil, uh, don't conduct electricity very well. I'll clean that back one up too. There's also a single uh, bearing point back here. I did not take this apart. The way this works is you got a threaded um, screw of sorts. It's threaded on the outside with a slot here and then there's a nut over it that locks it down. So you back the nut off 
then you can unscrew this and there's a single bearing point in there I just work some grease in from this side it's, it's kind of finicky to play around with that and you can see for each rotation of this the outer one moves less that's how they achieve that uh, gear reduction ratio action without actually using gears now I'm back to working on the sub chassis I disconnected a few wires so I could separate the two and then there just wasn't any uh, good way that I could see to work on this big light block in place so I carefully disconnected the wires going to it and removed it and now I'll restuff it just like I did with the others I still have more work to do but I'm going to wrap up this segment with two final topics one is I made a mistake big time and thank you to the viewer that pointed it out. There is nothing wrong with this wire that I said was open. I was checking the wrong pin. I had three wires crossing over here. It's a real mess. The ground wire that I thought was going here is actually going here. And I had the negative lead on the cap going here. And I had temporarily grounded this thinking that, that was supposed to be grounded. No. That is one of the plates. <laughs> that is going to uh, one side of the secondary. Um, on a, so the center tap secondary, this is one of the sides. What I should have done is gone over the schematic and written in the pin numbers, which I have done now. So that is pin 3, and that's what I grounded. So I essentially shorted out half of the secondary. If I'm lucky, I didn't do any damage. I didn't leave this on for very long, so I think I'm okay. Time will tell. Pin 2 is what's grounded, which is down here. So that wire that I thought was going here is actually going underneath, down through here, and over to here. And as he suggested, I think I... <laughs> Um, may very well uh, be best served by undoing this wiring and do a neater job. I did move the negative lead on the cap already just so I don't forget about it. Um, but I don't really trust those wires. Especially that one going under there after heating up this connection. You can see how that uh, insulation, that old gutter percha, has kind of oozed out. Alright, so that's that. The other thing is the knobs. So check out that knob that I was saying was so funky looking. And I started doing one of these. These were clear coated. I don't know exactly with what, but it comes off with lacquer thinner and a Q-tip. I have no idea if that was done at the factory or if somebody did it later on to make the knobs look a little prettier. Um, so this is when I took off and you can see it's got some dings, it's got some pits on it. But I think it looks better than this, <laughs> which is the uh, old clear coat, which I'm guessing is failing or clouded over time. Maybe some moisture got underneath it, I don't know. And I want to be careful because I don't want to remove the red dot. I mean, yeah, worst case scenario, I can repaint the red dot. Ah, you're always getting into stuff. So I'm going to carefully do the rest of these knobs, and this one I went over a bit with Novus, or no, I use Simichrome actually, Simichrome Metal Polish, does a nice job. So I'll be doing that on the rest, and uh, I went over this a bit, I think it's looking pretty, pretty sweet now. Alright, so that is going to wrap it up for this installment, uh, hopefully in the next one I will finish the recap. And we can power this back up. Here's where things stand right now. I rebuilt that big light block, remounted it, replaced one of the caps. I still have work to do on the switch. I did uh, clean up the contacts with the oxid and the Q-tip. 
Uh, it's been recommended to me that's a better way to go than to just spray the stuff and flood it into the switch deck uh, to just carefully clean up the contact points there. So that's just about done. I, uh, that's going to be it for now.